So I just wanted to have a look at the design of the 7900 XTX and the vapor chamber. Uh, some of the other YouTube videos, I, I took this picture from the Der Bauer video. Uh, I just wanted to share my analysis as an engineer who has done calculations on these kind of things and some of my conclusions. So here you have the vapor chamber. It's quite a large vapor chamber actually. If you compare vapor chambers to heat pipes, then vapor chambers are a very good way to transfer heat from a small area to a bigger surface. So in this case, from the GPU to the fin stack. And one of the advantages of vapor chambers compared to heat pipes is that if you want to have a bigger heat pipe and move more heat, then you lose uh, the ratio between area and surface. So if you make heat pipes bigger, they tend to not work as well because the, the outside area where the, the fluid has to go through also decreases. In the vapor chamber, you can design it in a way that the area where the fluid goes through an area where the, the gases or the vapor goes through in the correct ratio. So if you look here, then you have the GPU here. And from the GPU, the vapor would go all the way, all around, would go all around the vapor chamber, and then any fluids would condense on the fin stack. And from the fin stack, the fluid should then wick back to the GPU, and also, of course, to the memory. And there it should heat up again and then turn into vapor and move around the fin stack. The great thing about vapor chambers is that when you have parts of the fin stack that gets better cooling, then there will also be more heat going through that area. What is surprising to me, a really big vapor chamber and the distances are also quite long. So if I look for example from here to here, then it's quite the distance that the vapor has traveled and also quite a distance that the um, fluid has to travel back. So the, the thing with heat pipes and also vapor chambers is that the longer they get, the less effective they get, unless it's helped by gravity. So in this case, for the areas around are going, the areas around that are close to it are gonna cool quite well. And the areas, for example, on the outside here, the movement of heat is not going to be as effective. Of course, if you have a lot of heat flow, then you still get proper cooling, but that's definitely something to look at. So the interesting here is that if you look at the GPU, then around the GPU here, you have a sintered, I think it's copper. We have a sintered copper that is around these little knobs here. And what happens there is that, of course, the, the wicking action of a fluid, it will wick through the mesh that you see here, and then it will wick into this uh, sintered material, and then it will the fluid will hit the GPU. The hardest calculation here is that the wicking effect will always be pushed by extra fluid coming in. So if fluid condenses here, it kind of pushes into here and around the GPU where you have where you have vapor forming from the liquid, it will kind of a suction. It's not really a suction effect. It's um, it's more of a wicking effect. Here is a schematic of the GPU. I've removed the RAM here. So what happens here is you have. Uh, let me just get another color. You have vapor all around here, and you have vapor coming off of the GPU, and then. Where the cooling happens, you have wick, and I'm going to make it purple. So you have wick flowing, and the wick will flow back here. Any cooling happening on the other side will also have wick flowing in. And the end, of course, is closed off. So there can be a little bit of wick flowing in. Uh, as long as you have fluid flowing to the GPU, it will keep cooling because the this area in between is open and the gas, the vapor will move quite quickly due to pressure differences. I think the, the more interesting thing here is that the cooling seems to work a lot better in vertical orientation than in horizontal orientation. I can kind of see that, but I'm also not sure why that is the case. I think it's mostly because the vapor chamber is really working at the edge of its uh, of its optimal operation. So if you look at a horizontal one, any wick that flows that has to it has to flow back through these little pillars here. 
because there is, the biggest surface area is around the sintered material here and there's only a little bit on the outside uh, i'm not sure if there is even a mesh or something like that on the outside which would allow the water to come back and if you look at the at the vertical orientation then the the wicking action is helped a little bit because the wick will go with gravity around here and then only at the end it has to flow by the um, the wicking or the fluid i guess you can say fluid internal pressure one of the things, of course, is that when you have a lot of fluid, it will start forming up in the bottom. But I think I think that's not really as likely the case. So if uh, if I'm looking at the results from the bower with the temperatures, then I can kind of get behind the um, that it's probably just not enough fluid inside of the heat pipe. So when you when you look at heat pipes, then you have to design them specifically for what you're cooling and the temperatures that you have to get. And what you do is you decide on the fluid and you decide on the filling pressure. So if you would take water, then that would have a normal evaporation temperature of 100 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. If you want your heat pipe to work at a lower temperature, then you have to drop the pressure inside of your heat pipe or your vapor chamber to evaporate at a lower pressure. What also happens is that when you have actual heat flow happening inside of the heat pipe, it will also change pressure. So generally, if you have a higher pressure, then you would have um you would have a higher temperature if you have lower pressure you would also lower the temperature it works correctly the thing is that this happens both ways around so if your temperature goes too high then the heat pipe will kind of cook itself and you get less performance out of the heat pipe if you choose your heat pipes to work at a very low temperature that that happens if you choose your heat pipe to work at a higher temperature then the ratio between the vapor and the fluid is not correct and that would also give it less effectiveness on the heat pipe so generally what you want to do is at the temperature range that you want it to work at more most effectively that's where you set the charging pressure at and the interesting thing I saw in uh, the temperature results from the Bauer is that the idle temperatures of the most problematic graphics card is actually slightly lower than the idle temperature of the graphics cards that work more correctly. It kind of supports the theory as well, because uh, at a lower load and lower temperature, it seems that the vapor changer works a bit more effectively because it has a slightly lower pressure that it works at. But when you increase the load and then increasing load also means increasing the temperature, it works less effectively and it kind of cooks out the vapor chamber. And that would mean that the whole vapor chamber is filled with vapor and there's almost no fluid. But I think it's mostly that there is just not enough fluid left over at the high temperatures so what would happen then is that you would still have some fluid because the fluid is always forming around the fin stack because that area is of course cooler but if the fin stacks get a bit hotter then uh, you would have less fluid forming i think that's the biggest issue so those are my first thoughts about the vapor chamber for the 7900 xtx I'm not 100% sure on the exact workings for this vapor chamber and uh, I'm, it's been some time that I last looked at these kind of vapor chambers. I'm curious to see what the actual results going to be. I think that uh, especially AMD has an issue because they are going to have to recall some of these GPUs because having a throttling GPU in a normal situation is just not acceptable. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.